show today. We've got a very special guest. Um, I'm joined today with Hillary Lynch. Hillary is, uh, she's a world champion collegiate horse judge. She's a card holding judge in multiple associations. She's an avid barrel racer. She's a wife. She's a mom and she's been my best friend for the last two decades. So um, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can hold our stuff together today. <laughs> I know. Uh, like I said, we did do a practice run yesterday. We thought that we were going to be all cool and have this go <laughs> smoothly, but it didn't. Um, that's okay. Uh, but we made it into it, into our practice run. Two minutes, Hillary. Yeah. And we're both sobbing. Yeah. So um, <laughs> this isn't meant to be, it's not meant to be a sad morning. It's not meant to be a sad copy with the cowgirls today. It's meant to be inspiring. Uh, Hillary's story is, is incredibly inspiring. She's such a bright light in this world. And um, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. The reason that I started Coffee with the Cowgirl is because I feel like there's just so much negativity in this world and um, not a lot of positivity. And my favorite part about people is their stories and what made them, what makes them. Um, the uniqueness about them. And I don't think that enough people share the good. It's so easy to share the bad. And um, yeah, if you choose to focus on the negative, you'll start living that every day and that life is not fun. So um, Hill and I met at Blackhawk uh, a, few moon, a few moons ago. Uh, <laughs> we were fast friends. We we're pretty inseparable. We failed college algebra together. Yeah. Um, learned how to play euchre together. Uh, learned how to play of, together. <laughs> we learned a lot of great life lessons together in those two years. Um, it was a great time. Uh, after Blackhawk, we went separate ways. Hill went to West Texas and I went to South Dakota State. Um, uh, but remained close friends as ever. I mean, talked every day, got us through that period of our life. Um, we were both away from our family, didn't know anybody. Uh, after college, we followed each other to and through multiple job changes, um, working side by side. And even though we live five hours apart, we still talk on a daily, weekly basis. We share um, you know, dreams, goals, visions, the good, the bad, and the ugly about life. And um, I called Hill a couple weeks ago when I was cleaning stalls on a Saturday morning. I texted her and I said, I got a crazy idea. Call me. So then she called me and I said, um, I'd love to, you know, this, I want to do this coffee with the cowgirl and I want you to be on it with me. And I want you to talk about ranch pleasure and she listens to a lot of podcasts too. So um, she says, you know, I, I'm i glad that you said so. I don't know if she said it. I'm glad. It was probably not I'm glad. She, like, <laughs> she was probably, you're freaking crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, she's like, you know, I really do want to share my story. I've been listening to some other people and I think it's time. I think it's time that I share what is in my heart, what's in my head. And I'm like, holy shit, let's do that. Can we do that? And then last night after we posted that she was going to do this and I seen that it had been like roughly viewed like 8,000 times, I was like, holy shit, Hillary, I'm scared now. I don't want to do it. Um, but all is well in the hood and uh, Hillary is just, she's got a really inspiring story and She's got so much good about her. And I think that it's cool that we get to share the good today. So Hill, um, with that being said, I, I'd i like for you to take some time and introduce yourself, talk about who you are, where you are from, um, people in your life, and what your journey to be the cowgirl you wanna be looks like for you. Okay, well, I'm Hillary Lynch. Like Breck said, I'm not very good on live, so <laughs> bear with me here. I'm from Bernard, Iowa, um, a small town 
I think it has two bars and one post office. We live just outside of town and it's about five miles south on the family farm and my husband farms and um, I actually work for Leadstone Animal Health. I sell pharmaceuticals for them, um, just a cattle farmer, dairy and beef. And I have two wonderful children, Johnny. She is, it's a girl and she is 10 and Cutter <laughs> is five and Cutter keeps me on my toes. Um, little bit about my background. Um, like Breck said, I went to, I judged in 4-H. We both met at Black Hawk East in Kiwana, Illinois. And um, Aaron Callahan was our coach. And then I transferred to West Texas A&M. And I did, you did, Jeff, I think about a year and a half, or I know a year and a half before I moved to Texas and yep. um, went there on scholarship. And um, I finished my schooling there for two years so we had a long distance relationship and that was difficult at times but it was awesome so um i moved back and we got married and um like i said settled in the family farm and um so kind of that's kind of where i sit anything else i'm missing yes you um well you had i mean you barrel race like yes i mean not just on like a local level, you were barrel racing on a national kind of level, Midwestern yeah. level and really into the fraternity horses. Yeah, I I actually, well, I have a fraternity. I had a derby horse um, that I rode for some people from Illinois for two years. And that was a really cool experience. I got to um, travel out to Nebraska and um, just, I can't thank them enough for that. But I stay kind of a little bit closer to home um, as much as I can just with Jeff farming and the two kids. And so I stay within two to like three, four hours ish around there. But um, the kids and I, um, we ride every night. It's awesome. Um, I have barrel horses, like Breck said, my daughter goat ties now and she's just starting to break away and um, really into little britches. Yeah, we yeah. do little britches. We, we, she made it to nationals last year. Um, she made it uh, to the short go and poles. We are not pole people, but we are learning, <laughs> but um, it's just been awesome. I, I love our Little Britches family and we actually little Brich, do Little Britches in Illinois. It's easier for Jeff because it's kind of on his off harvest and planting time for the most part. So he's able to yeah. go to those and he's really enjoyed them. Um, even during my treatments, he's taken to them or taken them to a couple of them and um, survived and super proud of them. But um, that's kind of what we do as far as a family. So it's really, we're really family oriented and we love that part of it. So um, Jeff, uh, we have 120, I think sometimes more when he doesn't tell me how many cows he buys around 120 head of cows. Um, we dabble <laughs> You're probably a mad that you just disclose that information because yeah. Cow farmers don't usually disclose that, right? Like yeah, you're not supposed yeah. to, isn't it the like code? <laughs> yeah. 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 One time we were sorting cattle and he, I was like, whose cows are these? And he was like, these are heifers. Cause I knew they weren't our tags. And he, he bought like 10 head of heifers from one of his buddies. And I was like, did you just think I don't notice? <laughs> but anyway, um, we dabble a little in the show cattle thing. Um, we farm, I couldn't tell you, we have 320, 80 ish acres of our own. And then um, we do some custom farming now. So that keeps him busy. And he also, we own one hog building and we run another hog building for somebody else that lives about five miles down the road. So um, Jeff stays really busy with doing that. So, yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Um, well, uh, through the years, our conversation has changed drastically from day to day because the hats that we wear in our life have increased, obviously. I mean, um, I think that if there would be a audio of our conversation some days, people would probably, I don't even know. <laughs> we, would have um, <laughs> you know <what? laughs> we would have like our own show. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, any, anyway, I know that like one conversation that has been brought up a lot over the years for us, <laughs> mindset because um, well we're both competitive people and we both uh, 
we both do the horses. We both compete in different arenas, um, but we still compete nonetheless. And after, you know, it was easy before we were married and had kids because it was just us that we had to take care of, right? I shouldn't say it was easy. It was ne- it's never easy competing in anything. But um, when you only have to think about yourself and your horse, it's a little bit uh, less stressful, I should say. And as we grew older and got married and had kids, the more hats that we were wearing, we just had to think of so much more. And it got to be, you know, just it's harder. I mean, and then you get down on yourself because you weren't doing what you used to be able to do, like because you put so much on your own shoulders and you put so much on your own head about I can't do that or I'm going to knock a barrel in your situation. Like you start feeding yourself that negativity. I'm going to knock the barrel. In my case, it was I'm going to make it to the finals, but I'm going to DQ. And that's what I was doing because I was telling myself I was going to do it. So when you tell yourself you're going to do something, you do it, obviously. And we talked about mindset a lot and because it was frustrating for us. And we'd have Monday morning calls with each other. And how was your weekend? And well, I'm struggling because of my, my mindset. I'm not in the right place and I don't know how to get out of it. So we've had lots of conversations over the years of how to get out of that mindset. And I know that something that we always talked about was we need to focus on one thing. And that one thing was the thing that we were not good at, right? And um, the... Can you give any thoughts, Hill, about like things that you like competing wise, like to overcome that? I don't think that you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just being a mom, you lose confidence. Mm. You're worried. I mean, you're I I know Mm. I'm worried still Um, just about if I get hurt, who's going to take care of my not that Jeff wouldn't not that Brandon wouldn't, but they're not the moms you're supposed to do it you know what I mean as far as that so I feel like that's what you're saying you know like we lost a lot of confidence and we still do we don't ride like we have no fear because now yeah. we have that fear you know yeah and, um I think you and I our biggest thing you'd make the short go somewhere or you know you'd make the finals somewhere and you didn't have the confidence you did in your first couple runs and so um, I think that's something that I'm still working on. And me too. I feel like I have it accomplished. I mean, last year I made um, like the short goal in my state finals and I knocked and I was like, yep, there it is. You know, I mean, you just, and I mean, you're just, it's going to happen. Don't get me wrong, but I do think it's confidence. And I think it's part of being a mom and trying to get that confidence and, um, I just feel like it's something you're always working on, I guess, is a good way to put it. Absolutely. And it is. I mean, it's it's something that you have to think about every time, because if you let your guard down with it, then it keeps happening. Yes. You know, so I don't think that it is something that you just that ever gets easier, goes away. I think it's something that you have to constantly remind yourself of. But I know in our conversations, we had talked a lot about just focusing on that one thing, like be it, keep your hands down or yeah, not be afraid to push into that barrel. I don't even know if I said that <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, but I but, had, you know, uh, this is a perfect example. I have a friend, Kelly, and I was at Gordyville last week or last fall. And I just, I mean, I was okay clocking or whatever. And, um, she said to me, I said, I know I'm missing something. And she's like, don't go to your hand until you're, um, or she's like, sorry, she's like, go at your first barrel. She goes, just leave her alone until like the last second. She goes, you're going to your hands too soon is what she said to me, you know? And she's like, you're picking her up too soon because I didn't have that trust in my horse. So I did it. And I like had a smoking first, smoking second. And I knocked my third because it was just out the window by that point. And I think I was so excited that I had just accomplished, <laughs> I accomplished yeah. that one thing and yeah. I cruised her out and um, I had like an awesome time, you know, like my time was awesome. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. I knocked that barrel, but I accomplished that one thing. And so then I was still mad at myself, but that's just, it's a process, you know? So 
Yeah. Well, um, right now, uh, life is life has taken a different turn for you. Yeah. And um, yeah, you're just going down a road that is obviously you've never done before. And um, I think, I mean, I'm going to let you tell that, but like I think about what's going on in your life now. And I think because you are such a competitor and because you've been in that competitor mindset and you know what it feels like yeah. in that way, I think that that is why you are being so strong in this aspect of your life right now. Yeah. So I'll let you share that story, Hill, about well, um, I have cervical cancer and I'm stage three. So um, I found out December 8th and it went so fast. I mean, I went to Iowa City um, and I had my pre-op appointment the same day. So then I had a radical hysterectomy December 30th. Um, in between there, I had a PET scan and that told me, you know, everybody thinks you have cervical cancer, it's cervical cancer. You have breast cancer, you have breast cancer. Well, it's actually a cancer that's like inside of you. So part of my tumor, um, my PET scan showed it was localized, which was awesome. Um, part of it was um, like carcinoma. The other was um, a neuroendocrine, which is less than 2%. Um, it's a rare form of cervical cancer. And um, it's cell-based. So... I, I do have a high chance of reoccurrence. Um, my reoccurring chance is three out of four. Um, so when they went in for my surgery, ultimately after my surgery is what would tell me how bad everything was. So they took everything at my surgery. I decided to take my ovaries because that neuroendocrine was in there. I didn't want it to have something to latch on to. So, um, after my surgery on my follow-up appointment, um, it had moved to a lymph node, the good cancer, if there is a good cancer, had moved to my lymph node. So that moved me from stage two to three. Um, and initially I was supposed to do five weeks of radiation with some chemo, one day a week chemo in there. But now I do, um, I just finished my 12 rounds of chemo. So um, a lot of things like changed. It was I don't think it really hit me until after my surgery appointment, I guess is a good way to put it at my follow up for my surgery. Um, I just kind of pretended I would have the surgery and everything would be okay. And then for it to come back, back a little worse was hard on me. But, um, you know, like you said, I just, uh, I set goals and told myself each step and um, with COVID and being sick and, being cold and flu season, it was so hard for me. And it still is. Um, you did almost all of your stuff by yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And but I think too, I think about that and I'm like, that would suck. I mean, let's be honest. It, it did suck. I'm sure. But yeah. you are such a freaking, um, well, I we're so independent that, yeah. I mean, and that can be, kind of a bad thing at times because you yeah. don't want to rely on anybody. But right. in that situation, um, because there's not a lot of people who can do what you just did by themselves. I mean, whew. and for me, I mean, I can't say by myself cause I mean I, a little bit, but I mean, just, but like they wouldn't let other people into the hospital for the most part. Like right. you would do a lot of that by yourself because right. of COVID. Yeah. But. I mean that part. Yep. I mean, Jeff had to drop me off at the front door and I remember I was like, I'm so I'm good, you know? And then I got in there and um, you have to scrub yourself down and I was completely lost it. And he had sent me a text message and sorry. And I thought, okay, I have a husband and two kids, you know, like I can do this. This is a step-by-step -step process. And then I think my surgery was like seven or eight hours. And um, I remember looking at the clock and it was 1.33. 
and Jeff came in my room. They let him come in after hours. You could only have one visitor from one to three every day. And he came in at 7.30, so maybe six and a half hours or whatever that is. I can't do the math. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, that was hard. And I mean, to lay in the hospital on New Year's thinking, mm-hmm. it, how is this year going to be? Or how many more New Year's will I have? I mean, that was hard for me. So um, it's just, I mean, I'm on the downhill slide. I have five weeks of radiation. I have 23 more radiation left in four small chemos. Um, Jeff has taken me to every appointment and he's been awesome. My mom got to take me the other day and I had a friend pick me up a few times, but um, like you said, just COVID and the sh- I can't even afford to get a cold and flu, you know, like during the season, thankfully it's getting warmer, but I mean, everybody's lives, your life changes overnight. I mean, those people don't understand. It's frustrating because sometimes they don't have to make sacrifices. They get to go to weddings or out on the weekend. And I mean, I don't go out on the weekend anyway, but I just want to go like with, let's be honest. Yeah. I was like, let's, I just want to go with my kids somewhere. And so I'm like, when people kind of grumble at me, I just say, or I think to myself, I'm like, you, I've made a lot of sacrifices in the last five months to get through it. And if you you don't have to make sacrifices, you know what I mean? Like those people just don't. And so that sometimes that's been frustrating for me, but we've all gotten through it and I know it's just a process. And anyway, um, I think uh, your, your mindset though, of you definitely carried your mindset from the arena over into this because You've just been so focused on getting through the day to day, like just, yes. I, I mean, and positive. I mean, I talk to you often and I get off the phone and I'm like, I want to throw a fit for you. You just will not allow yourself to do it though, because you know, I just feel like, you know, in your head, like it does, you no good. Yeah. And that you, have, I'm sure that there are days that you want to freaking throw yourself down and have a damn fit. Yeah. But you know, it does no good and you have to just keep marching forward and doing it. And you freaking are, and it's amazing and such an inspiration. And I also believe fully that um, it doesn't matter where you are at in your life. If you, if you do good and you give back to others, you will always be rewarded and, um, God will do good things for you. And I see that in you, like you are going through a really tough time right now. And then we talk and then you tell me that um, such and such is sick or, you know, and you're out there giving back to them and doing good things for them. I mean, I think that's a good lesson for anybody to learn or know about or hear is it doesn't matter where, what season in your life you're in. I mean, always do good for others and it'll be returned to you. Yeah. And I mean, my doctors, they always preach to me. They're like, it's a mindset. They're like, if you just basically, I mean, they didn't word it like this, but that's if I put myself in a hole and I don't get out of that, I know I will be in a bad place. And I truly know that will affect me as my recovery time. Um, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As the cancer, I think, I don't want to say it feeds off of stress, but you can't tell me it doesn't a little bit. And I think to myself, I'm like, I have two little kids. I have a lot of, a lot of memories to make. So. A lot of living to do. Yes, yes, yes. So I just tell myself that often and I stay strong for them. I mean, I don't know if I've had one meltdown in front of them, which has been awesome. I've had 20,000 in front of Jeff, not 20,000, I should say actually probably only three or four. I mean, I'm, this is probably my fifth (laughs) because I'm just emotional seeing you or whatever, but I mean, Jeff has been my rock. I mean, I don't know. He just knows. I mean, I feel bad for him. He's seen me at my absolute worst. So everybody can see me at my best, you know? Hey, they knew what they were getting into when he married you. I know. (laughs) I, uh, I know. And I just think, gosh, those, three, four, five, six, seven days, whatever, depending on what round of chemo I'm on. 
I mean, he just sees me when I'm really bad and really sick. And then, you know, I think everybody else, you know, when I get out, of, I don't leave the house on those days. So I know that's hard for him and can be frustrating for him too. But I like, can't tell you how much I appreciate him as well. So he's just been awesome through everything. Yeah. So Yeah. Definitely makes things easier when yeah. you have a good support system and you do. Um, you've been able to ride and take care of your horse and you've yeah. had a baby horse during all of this. Yep. So that helps as well. That definitely helps. I just, if I have a bad day, I make myself get out of the house and um, do something, even if it's just sitting on a horse out in the arena and watching the kids or, you know, if I'm right after chemo, sometimes I just don't have the strength to get on one so I just lunge them so <laughs> I'm like even that or just brushing them or whatever just good for my soul and good for my kids too I mean it's good for them to see me do that I think that that is right there Hillary is probably the reason that I wanted you to be on here the most is because um people need I mean that is that message that you just said right there is what people need to hear because I think um especially within the season that we just went through over the last year. Has it been a year yeah. and a half that we've been through COVID? I mean, that took a mental toll on so many people. And um, it just, every situation is how you choose to look at it. Yeah. Every situation can be bad if you choose to look at it bad, or it can be good. And I'm not saying that you look at this situation good, but you're sure taking the best from it that you can. Yeah. Because you know that, it does nothing for you to look at it the opposite way. Yeah. Um, doesn't, doesn't make me better if I sit in the house and pout and feel sorry for myself. And I know my kids see that, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, or they would, they don't because I just don't allow myself to be like that. And I think it just helps. I mean, I have bad days too, like I said, and luckily I've had very few because I have such a strong support system as well. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I know that you have a goal in mind and um, that's kind of been fueling your fire to get better and stay healthy. And your goal is that you want to get to Little Britches yeah. in J June, right? July. Yeah. July. And I just told myself, I was like that. And like you said, it's a step-by-step -step process. So like for me, I just had to stay healthy and I just kind of locked my house down and um, controlled my environment. And, you know, I don't, I don't have the COVID shot um, right or wrong of me, but if I got you the COVID. You can't really get it though right now. I, I can because I'm high on the list. Oh. But for me, if I got sick, then yeah. um, that would delay my treatments. And, you know, there's not a lot of data with people that have cancer. I know some friends that have cancer that have gotten it and had good luck. Um, but there's not a lot of data there as far as people with cancer getting it. Um, I always, you know, some people preach, well, I've gotten my COVID shot. And I said, I, I get it. But that doesn't keep me safe. You know, you getting it keeps you safe. But me, I don't have it. And it, will I get it when I'm healthy? possibly, but right now for me, um, it could delay my treatments if I got sick. And I mean, there's not a lot of data out there anyway, let alone people with cancer patients. So that made me nervous and it was a family decision. And my doctor didn't pressure me to get it. He said, I see where you're coming from. And so um, for me, I just have been like super cautious. And my goal is just to get through so I can enjoy my family and, um, you know, go to my little britches stuff in July and, um, make sure I kind of have my stuff together for that. So I know it's 21 days after treatment is, um, kind of when my immune system will be up. So another thing that I think is truly inspiring about your, um, story hill and not only do I think it's inspiring, but I think that it's probably what keeps you, in such a good mindset too is you have been working through all of this yeah and like you i mean you just told everybody that your treatment is was very aggressive and you were getting super sick from that chemo 
but because you knew like you, it just working would keep you in that mindset that you needed to right. be in to do this so yeah. i just i think that that's so cool because i just don't think there's a lot of people who yeah understand i mean you have this is just a good wake up call people i think um it is such a good wake up call because it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you are going through what Hillary is going through right now, or if you're going through something completely different, or if you're going through something like so small, if you don't have the right mindset, you won't get through it. And I, there's just the power of the mindset and where you're going with it. It, it is insane what it can do for you. And yep. you are living that you're living proof of that. Yep. I've limited my time um, out doing calls, but I mean, the, I don't work. I take the weeks off of my chemo and I take the week three or four days after so I can recover. And then, um, I've been really lucky with my job. They let me work in office. And like I said, I've done a couple farm day calls or some here and there when it's nice out you work for, for an amazing company. Yeah. And my farmers, I mean, they don't come within my distance and I stay safe and you know what I mean? So that, but yeah, it's been awesome. It's been really good for my mind. Um, just to let everybody know too, if you have any questions for Hillary about any of this, make sure you type it in the chat. Um, Hillary, is there any last things that you want to add to that? I think I'm, I'm like so proud of us because we totally made that made it through that without like losing it. Yeah, ugly crying because I really thought it might happen. <laughs> I so too. It's so um, here with my yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, that your um, gas station napkins. Yeah, I know um, that. Uh, um, Hill now. So I mean, judging has been a very big part of your life. Yeah, and. Uh, you are really good at it. I mean, um, not only did you judge, you were, well, you were world champion on Blackhawks team, but A&M to Texas A&M's collegiate team. You went to school on a full ride to both of those, I believe. Um, partial on West Texas A&M, but yeah, on For Blackhawk and it was, yep. Yeah, and I, um, I actually, we were Callahan's, John Wolf had retired and we were Callahan's first team. And um, Aaron Callahan, I should, I just always call him Callahan. Callahan. <laughs> anyway, um, and so we were world champions and I was reserve overall. And um, it's been so long ago, I can't tell you what else. No, I, don't have, like, it has been. Four, I have like three or four um, AQHA world champion trophies, which is an awesome memory. And um, yep. And then I transferred to West Texas A&M and I was on a successful judging team there. And it's just, it's that was awesome experience. I loved every minute of it. Well, so and you hold a judge's card in POA yeah. and you hold it for the Iowa horse. Is it Iowa Horse Foundation? Nope. Um just the Iowa judges card basically. Oh yeah. but so you judge a lot of the um fairs and open yeah. shows um in Iowa through right. that. And so just because we've got an upcoming show, I thought it'd be fun for you to tell just a little bit about what you your thoughts are about ranch pleasure and a few tips that you would look for. Um, ranch pleasure, it's one of my favorite classes to judge, honestly. Um, it just is just not like old school to me, but- um, The free or flowing. <laughs> yes, it's yeah. more, um, they're replicating um, riding a horse, riding outside the arena on a working ranch, like working cattle. So for me, um, a lot of things I just kind of look for is um, good manners and responsiveness, obviously, um, just more forward working speed, um, but also like under control with the rider. So they don't like, there's a happy medium. They don't like a lot of dra drape of rain, but um, they don't like a lot of collection like you would see in your Western pleasure classes either. Um, for me personally, I love a ground covering stride. So when I go to that, I'll call for the extended trot. And um, that's kind of one of my favorite gates in the ranch pleasure. And I really want to see a horse just move out and not only be a great mover, but just have that ground covering stride and um, more extended than 
your Western pleasure jog or even the jog at the ranch pleasure too. So um, just free or flowing, um, the lope, um, just relaxed a lot more forward, obviously, than your Western pleasure. Um, I look for a lot of depth of hock and a lot of reach from behind. Um, just like I said, something or a horse that you would like to see or go gather cattle on because yeah. you're going out on, you know, say you're in South Dakota and you're on um, hundreds of acres. Well, you want that horse to have a longer, more length of stride so you can cover more ground um, is basically what they're asking for um, on the ranch pleasure classes as well. So, um, and like I said, quality of movement is huge for me. So um, that's something, um, your transitions, I like a smooth transition. Um, like I said, the horse shouldn't be on like a long drape of rain, um, not over bridled or out of frame. Um, extended lope, I want that really obvious when I extend the lope. Sometimes it gets a little crazy. I mean, that's like yeah. my favorite part. Um, a lot of expression and I like my horses just to be bright eyed and like, that sounds really crazy, but I feel like then they enjoy their job. You know, their ears are forward and they're really liking what they're doing. So those are. We do have a question, Hill. Uh, Chelsea wants to know um, if you, at the extended shot, bleh, at the extended trot, should you post? Um, you can post a lot. Um, some people just kind of two point. So um, just kind of sit up and they're forward. Yep, mm -hmm. and raise forward. Um, I would say that's more common than posting, but some people post. I mean, I see both. Um, either or, I guess, isn't um, isn't a deal breaker for me. I don't know if that's the right terminology really for it. Um, for me, I look for the quality of movement and how your horse is responding to what you're doing. So if your horse is better when you are posting, um, that's great. If your horse is better when, you know, you just squeeze your knees and kind of go up into two point and raise forward and lean forward and encourage them to move out. That's great as well. So, you know, um, it's funny that you say that's your favorite, one of your favorite classes to judge, because I do get a lot of ladies who are like, oh, we wish that you wouldn't do the ranch pleasure with your shows. But I personally feel like it's one of the most important classes because your horse has to be able to be responsive and do what you want. And because if it's not, it's not a joy to ride in the other classes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And be um, broke. I mean, yeah, it's gotta be broke. Yeah. So I, you know, judge a lot of County fairs and I have those kids complain about showmanship and I'm like, Hey, if you can't control your horse on the ground and you know, you're required to do showmanship, then it, it worries me. When you go when you're riding, riding them. <laughs> yes. yes, yes, and I mean everybody jumps to riding right away, but I mean it is brokenness and consistency. I mean that's mm -hmm. it. Whether it's showmanship or in your riding classes, I feel like that's a huge thing. So I agree with you. Thank you for that, Hillary. If you guys have any questions, keep typing them in the chat. Uh, one thing that I, I like to ask in of the people that I've interviewed and I'm going to ask you, Hill, is what does, I know that um, be the cowgirl that you want to be has probably changed for you over the years. And what does that, what does be the cowgirl you want to be look like for you today? Well, it's so different. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I know like my journey the last five months has totally changed my mindset from before, you know, um, for me, I just want to enjoy time with my kids, whether, um, I know, I don't know if I'll have the strength to ride, um, this summer. I do have goals at the end of the summer that I want. Um, but I would say my goals are more, um, towards my kids and their riding at this point than myself until, I know my strength is back. I'm pretty sure if I got on my horse, I could I can ride and I've had that strength, but um, just on the barrel racing end, I think it'll be a little bit before I can run a set of barrels. But um, my goal is I have some at the end of the year. I want to be barrel racing, you know, towards the end of the summer. But right now it's set for my kids and getting my kids going and um, which 
they do awesome. But um, those are kind of my goals as far as that. And just get healthy. Um, and that's about it, really. I don't know if that's a good answer. But yeah, I know my goals. Um, my life has changed overnight. So um, it changes with, you just have to deal with the change, I guess. You know, uh, even if it ha if even if your life hadn't changed, I still think that that would be your answer. Yes, because your kids have always been your focus since they've been able to ride and watching them succeed. Um, I would say the same for me too. Like you want it more for them than you do yourself, don't you? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, it is crazy as you get older that how that change your changes your perspective. And maybe it doesn't, maybe you're, it doesn't change like that for everybody, but um, I certainly think that's true. Yeah. Uh, what's one unique thing about you that you'd like to share with the viewers that they may not know? Well, I kind of covered it a little earlier. <laughs> um, just like I said, my husband farms, um, we have, we own one hog building and we contract feed for, other people are and then um the other one um somebody else owns and my husband runs it um that we raise show cattle and we have work out farmers too um i would say that's like our unique thing so for us i mean it's not only the horses and my job kind of ties in there which is awesome um we're just all ag you know and all in with on the agriculture side whether um you know, as far as farming and rodeo and my kids doing um, little britches, which we love. Um, that would be kind of our unique thing for the most part. Yep. When I, uh, when we had our practice yesterday before our practice, when I called you, you were out feeding bottle calves. <laughs> yes. So definitely I, living the life that way. Yep. And I claimed those about a week ago because I decided well, I mean, my kids are starting to rope. So um, I advertised on Facebook to get a rope shoe. And I thought, well, we have some bottle calves. So I just mm -hmm. called Jeff and pretty much told them that now those are mine. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's just all in. I mean, I always am helping out around the farm as much as I can when I'm not helping the kids with the horses. I mean, that's kind of my thing. Um but sorting cattle or running meals to the guys at night and um, kind of doing that. But um, it's just always craziness at our house and running 90 miles an hour. So that's re it's really kept me healthy, I feel like, too. So we're very lucky. I don't live in town and have to sit at home and can't go outside and enjoy it. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, I can't thank you enough for um, doing this with us today, Hillary. Uh, Thank you. Love for everything that you stand for and um, that incredible mindset that you have, you carry with you. Thank you. Um, it's awesome. If anybody has any questions for Hillary, uh, feel free to type them in the chat or um, <laughs> uh, we're getting messages over here, Hillary, um, about your inspiring talk. Uh, so anyway, but I thank you so much for doing this for me today. Um, I know that how much, I know how important your story is to share uh, with others and give them a little piece of inspiration from you. Um, feel free to reach out to Hillary if you have any questions, if you need her contact, you can get it from me. I look forward to seeing a lot of you this weekend. Um, we're looking forward to a fun show. The weather's supposed to be nice. so. Thank goodness for that. Yes. Um, yay. Uh, I thank you guys so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys continue to um, follow our Coffee with the Cowgirls Thursday at 10. So uh, look for who we will be interviewing next week early on Monday, I guess. So thank you guys so much. Thank you, Hillary. Any last words you'd like to say? Thank you for having me. No. You're welcome. But thank you very much. Well, thank you guys again. Uh, how many girls are coming this weekend? Chelsea, it's kind of changed on the daily. It's like 50 some. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. yeah. I wish I lived closer. I'd go sneak in a corner on a lawn chair. Watch. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I'm like, I can't wait to just get out. Yep. And do something. So, yeah.
I know. Well, I hope everybody has a great day and a great weekend and uh, take care. Thanks again, Hillary. Love you. Thanks. Love you too. Bye.